What's going on, Still Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do part two of our free agency preview. You guys seem to like the first version that we did on the free agent wide receiver class. Now, we're going to talk about a more important position for the Steelers offense, which is going to be center. Uh, you guys, a lot of people commented that y'all wanted me to break down this class. And, you know, over the past 48 hours, I've spent, you know, time just like watching film of just not just the NFL draft class uh, center wise, which is also a really strong group, uh, just this free agent group. Uh, trying to find good schematic fits for what the Steelers want to do on offense. And I've picked out a handful of guys that I want to talk about just of their fits, potential contract stuff, um, reasons why I like them, strengths, weaknesses, all that stuff, how we normally do it on the channel. Um, you know, as the time of I'm recording this, about 24 to 36 hours ago, the Steelers released uh, their starting center from last season, Mason Cole. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised by the timing of this move, maybe. Um, but honestly, I this was an expected thing for me, even the timing aspect of it. Um, you know, Mason Cole struggles were well documented last season, you know, snapping the ball, run game, pass game stuff. It was just it was brutal to watch at times. Uh, he was a frequent guy that ended up on uh, my dudes and does list on the wrong end of that. Um, just really struggled last season. Uh, I always th kind of thought that his 2022 tape was a little bit overrated just because of I think the perception of his game was overinflated because of who he was uh, seceding, um, I will say, at the at the position. But, you know, they the Steelers had to move away from a lot of their outside zone stuff early in the year last year because he just wasn't the requisite athlete to make some of the blocks that they were asking him to make uh, in space. And I think that, you know, when you talk about bringing in a new offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith, you know, Arthur Smith, the number one zone rushing guy in the NFL the last three seasons, the Atlanta Falcons, number one usage rate um, in terms of zone blocking concepts. This just was not a good schematic fit for what Mason Cole was going to be. When you add in the fact that they could save, you know, 4.75, nearly 5 million on the cap, the move was really expected. This was going to happen eventually anyway. I also like it from a player standpoint because you give Mason Cole a better opportunity to kind of get a jump start on free agency. Go ahead, put some fillers out there um, and, you know, try to find his next opportunity. So um, it's definitely a move that makes sense. The Steelers do not have a guy on the roster right now that I feel warm and fuzzy about, um, you know, so this there's going to be a pretty significant addition. I feel like uh, definitely need a starting caliber player, you know, Nate Herbig, a guy who's a kind of bigger brawler type, but definitely more of a guard, in my opinion, not someone that you really want at the pivot, especially in this type of offense. Uh, you know, Herbig also has a contract kind of decision coming up. You know, they can save four million by letting him go as well. We'll see what they end up doing with that. Uh, James Daniels does have some center experience dating back to his days at Chicago, but I really feel like the Steelers are trying to, you know, kind of stone him in at guard. I think he's played good football for them. They've got good return uh, on their investment uh, that they made a couple years ago in free agency. James Daniels is a really solid player. I would just prefer to leave him where he's been at um, instead of just flip-flopping positions and maybe, maybe even creating more problems than you already have on the offensive line. So, um, you know, with that being said, like I said, I really like the draft class coming up and we can talk about some of those guys down the road as well. Uh, but I do want to talk about some free agent fits uh, for Arthur Smith's offense. The first guy that we're going to go over is actually going to be uh, someone from Miami, a heavy zone blocking system is going to be Connor Williams, um, who is coming off really, honestly, the best year of his career, probably. Um, you know, Williams started his career in Dallas. Uh, he's going to be 27 years old this year. Um, this is a guy who you know, really, really stood out to me when I was watching him on tape. You know, he was a former tackle in College of Texas, played guard in Dallas. Uh, Miami signed into play center. And honestly, he's picked the position up extremely quick. Uh, really impressive athlete in space. Um, I really like his body control and targeting when he's asked to climb to the second level. You know, anytime he was working uncovered and able to get to the linebackers, you know, just did a, did a really good job sustaining blocks, steering guys. Uh, some of Miami's best, like big play runs uh, with Raheem Mostert in the backfield really came working off of Connor Williams. Um, so really good player uh, was playing exceptional ball last season. I felt like um, in pass pro really like his patience uh, does a good job, you know, really fundamentally sound, really good eyes and pass pro. I, I felt like early in the season, especially in the couple games that I watched, they were passing off stunts extremely well, giving it to a really nice pocket. Um, one of the things like negative wise, um, that I that I did see, you know, he does have some wide hand placement. He will give up his chest. Uh, felt like that was really when he struggled in pass pro uh, or when guys won reps on him. That was really the the issue there. So um, just just some stuff to kind of clean up. You know, holding penalties were a little bit of an issue with the Cowboys as well. That's one of the reasons I feel like they let him along with the depth that they had up front. 
one of the reasons why they let him go. But, you know, he's been much better in that department the last two seasons at center. So that's been a good thing. Um, Miami's offense also was much, much better with him in the lineup last year. They averaged 8.7 yards per drop back when he was in the lineup. That dropped all the way to 6.6 uh, when he was on the bench and their sack rate doubled. So this is a guy who was extremely impactful for a Dolphins offense that was, you know, really, really humming before he got injured. Now, the downside to that is, you know, he did tear his ACL in, in week 14. So really terrible. You know, you feel really bad for the player. You know, he's playing the best ball of his career and then suffers a really unfortunate, significant injury. You know, week 14. So he tears his ACL. What is that like late December? When is he going to be ready to go? Um, what type of, you know, I think for an offensive lineman, especially a guy like him, who is a really good athlete, um, and some of his strengths really rely on that athleticism. It is a little bit tricky on projecting, you know, when is he going to be back? Is he going to be back to himself in year one? Is it going to take a second year for him to get back kind of up to speed? Those are definitely questions. And I know he's talked about, you know, leading into this free agency that he's going to take his time, try to find the right fit. Um, so I think anytime you're dealing with a guy this is a very unique situation because he's playing the best ball of his career, still in the prime of his career, but he's coming off a significant injury. So that's going to be definitely an interesting, um, you know, kind of market to watch pro football focus. Like I mentioned in the last video, Brad Spielberger does a great job projecting, you know, contract projections, uh, definitely a, a, a useful resource for me whenever I'm putting out content this time of year, they haven't projected three years, 22 and a half million. That's about seven and a half million average per year. That honestly is a bargain for the type of player that he was last season. Now, again, or really the past two seasons, honestly, that's somebody that is at the very top of the market, or this would be a sizable addition, more of a splash type of signing for the Steelers. But if they wanted to just take, take care of the position for the next couple of years, this is a guy who's young enough. He can be the starter for you know many years to come, provided he comes back from that ACL injury, um, everything intact there. But um, you know, he is a guy that I really like this film. I do think he's an excellent fit in terms of what Arthur Smith wants to do on offense. Uh, like I said, I just I, I just hate that he was coming off the injury, man. I think that if he wasn't coming off the injury, he would have gotten a lot more money in free agency, would have, which probably would have excluded him from this conversation altogether, because I don't think that the Steelers are going to spend, you know, big money. Um, but, you know, that that's definitely something to, to monitor. Um, the next player that I'm going to talk about is actually Aaron Brewer for the Titans. So, I kind of stumbled on Aaron Brewer in a weird sort of way uh, a little over, I would say, a month ago. You know, Ryan Tannehill is a guy that I've, you know, talked about being a possibility for the Steelers in terms of them adding a quarterback in free agency. You know, the links to Arthur Smith make a lot of sense there. When I was watching uh, the Titans film, especially last season, I watched four or five games, I think, of Tannehill, and the center just kept popping whenever they were running the ball. And I was like, who is this guy? So I looked it up, Aaron Brewer. Uh, just kind of some background stuff on him has a really unique kind of story to the NFL. He was undrafted. He came in 275 pounds at his pro day. In case you guys don't know, like that's historically light for the offensive line position. Uh, now he's playing up to 290. Uh, but this dude, it's rare for offensive linemen to provide like highlight worthy blocks where you could create like an entire just minutes and minutes long of highlights of them blocking somebody. A lot of people aren't even interested in that in the first place. But this dude is an insane run blocker. Um, springy athlete, elite, elite athletes. One of the absolute best athletes at the offensive line position, NFL wide. Um, just a true weapon uh, in the zone run game. He puts together some insane reach blocks, man. The range that this dude has on the line is um, is really, really impressive. Uh, plays with really good pad level, uh, leg drive, finishing mentality. This dude is a dude who plays with a chip on his shoulder. I think some of that undrafted feel for him definitely still exists. Um, consistently chirping, has a nasty kind of demeanor about him that I really appreciate. Um, you know, he does have 33 plus uh, inch arms as well. And some of that length is, um, you know, will pop and pass pro on occasion. Um, like I said, he was drafted in 20 or he was for his first year was in 2020 uh, with the Titans. And that was Arthur Smith's final year as the offensive coordinator in Tennessee. He didn't play a ton um, his rookie season, but he did get on the field a little bit. Definitely somebody that Arthur Smith has seen work is familiar with. So I think that there's some uh, familiarity with that relationship as well that could, you know, um, be interesting to look at. He's probably the best run game fit for what Smith likes to do on offense with all the outside zone, the wide zone. This dude, insane athlete. Like, honestly, like, seriously, one of the best athletes that I've probably ever seen at the position. Um, he's really light, so he has to be that, but he's an incredible athlete. He 
if you look at some of the guys that Arthur Smith had played that position, when he got to Atlanta, they drafted Drew Dahlman, uh, I think in the third or fourth round of his first year being there. Kind of a similar player to Brewer, honestly. Like, has a lot of athleticism, really good out in space, can reach block, uh, a weapon in the run game, but has some of the same issues, I feel like, in terms of negatives as well. With Brewer, big thing with him is just the size. Like, he's he's just a smaller guy, and the lack of power uh, in his game is very evident. Uh, really struggles to anchor, anchor, I feel like, bigger defensive linemen, especially the guys that are, you know, really good pass rushers, gave him a lot of problems in terms of just being able to overwhelm him with just size and strength, physicality. Um, you know, he's a very high-effort player, which I really appreciate. Uh, he fights, you know, every rep. This is a guy who doesn't take plays off. Um, like I said, tenacious blocker but there are just some side stuff that he just cannot um you know kind of overcome at this stage of his career he's a guy who you absolutely have to put kind of in between two really good blockers uh at the garbage spot and i actually think that the stewards probably have that already isaac samalo james daniels both those guys are really sufficient uh or proficient uh pass blockers last season so this would uh, be a way that you can kind of compensate for that a little bit um but brewer is a really nice player man uh i think that there is a chance that Brewer is more of a fun player than a really good player. Um, and maybe I'm letting some of the highlight worthy blocks kind of cloud my vision here. Uh, but I do think that he's definitely a guy that the stewards will at least check in with. Um, he's 26 years old, pro football focus. Um, you know, they have him slotted at three years, 20 million, 6.6 um, APY. So not that much different than Connor Williams. I do think Williams is a better player. He had better tape last season, but in terms of like a run game fit, there's not really a better run game fit for Aaron Brewer. Like I said, you just have to get over some of the deficiencies in pass pro um, right there. But an incredibly fun player, definitely someone that I've uh, really enjoyed watching tape on. And um, we'll, we'll see if that kind of relationship comes to fruition. Last guy that we're going to go over um, is Brian Allen, a guy who was just recently released uh, by the Los Angeles Rams. You know, Allen, uh, now 28 years old, former fourth round pick out of Michigan State. You know, he was really instrumental in the Rams Super Bowl run back in 2021. Um, this is a guy who kind of, I feel like, really popped um, on just live viewings for me. He was a guy who I was familiar with, but went back and watched some of his tape from 2022. Um, one of the things that immediately pops is dominant. Uh, just the way that he, some of his play strength examples, I, I think, are really impressive. Um, he has a dominant wrestling background in high school. This is a guy who went 48 and 0. And this is my research just this morning, but 48 and 0 with four state titles. And you see it like when you watch his film, just the way that he attacks the position. He just looks like a former wrestler, which I always uh, think is a plus in somebody's scouting report. Um, he's a leverage monster man, plays with exceptional leverage, uh, has good sustainability, and he has pretty good, uh, pretty decent athleticism in space. Um, one of the things I like about Allen when he's in pass pro, consistently refits his hands to get in good position. Um, one of the things I didn't like about his film was I felt like uh, in the two games that I watched, they were really struggling to pick up stunts. Now, I know in 2022, the Rams offensive line was a complete disaster. It was much better last season, um, but that was something that really was notable, um, something I always pay attention to with centers uh, in particular. The downside with Allen dealt with a plethora of injuries, man. Like he's had a partially torn ACL. He's only played 400 snaps the last two seasons, calf, knee, thumb injuries in 2022, causing him to miss a handful of games. I think like seven, eight games. And then this past season in 2023, like he, he lost a starting job, was not able to retain it. I think they went with a different center. Who's also a free agent this, this year. Um, but the Rams over the past, you know, 18 months have underwent a significant schematic shift into more of a gap or power scheme. Uh, whereas Allen, he was drafted, to the center spot because they were running a lot of wide zone at the time back in like 2019, 2018, whenever that was. Um, so he's a much better fit for what the Steelers want to do on offense right now than what the Rams are shifting to. Um, so maybe there's, you know, some type of schematic fit there. Like I said, it's really difficult. PFF doesn't even have him on the rankings right now, uh, mainly just because like, I'm sure he was just released a couple of days ago. Um, but he's a difficult guy to project on what he would command in terms of on the um, open market. He would be a guy that I think uh, I would think would sign a one, maybe two year, really cheap contract, maybe something similar um, to what Herbie got on the open market, maybe a little bit more than that, just because he showed more of an ability as a starter when he's been healthy. But it's just been a couple years. So this is a guy who I, I think his market will be 
really difficult to gauge until we get some type of, um, you know, reports on, you know, visits or interest uh, floating out there when free agency actually comes about. But he's a guy, if the Steelers want a guy that just can come in uh, and maybe keep like a seat, the seat warm for a guy in, in the rookie class that you really like, for example, I really like Jackson Powers uh, Johnson guy that I have a really high grade on right now. There's some other uh, intriguing center options as well. You know, Zach Frazier, former wrestler uh, from West Virginia, really, really good prospect as well. I know a lot of people are really high on him. Grant Barton, uh, tackle for Duke, that's going to make the transition inside of the next level. Cedric Van Bram from Georgia, guy that's got, uh, got a lot of hype coming into the 2023 college football season. It's a pretty good uh, center class. And it's honestly really a perfect time for it because I talk about this a lot, you know, on the channel, on Twitter. We don't have enough quality offensive linemen in the NFL right now. Like that really is particularly true. I feel like at the center spot, we just don't have 32 qualified centers, man. We just don't. Um, and and it makes finding these guys extremely difficult uh, to the point where you may have to overpay a little bit in free agency um, to get a guy that you really like that fits your system well, because they just like in a draft class, you may be lucky. Like this year, I feel like um, there's four or five guys that I feel like could definitely be starters at some point in their rookie contract. Uh, but honestly, that's that's a high number for a draft class. I mean, there's some years where there's not a center, um, a guy who played center in college that you really feel comfortable with taking in the top 50 or top 75 picks. It's just the reality of the position. Um, guys are asked to do a lot of different stuff in college than they are asked to do in the pros. So um, but I appreciate you guys tapping in with me as always. Um, I do want to uh, you know, give you guys a shout out. A lot of the feedback that I got on the first video was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, tons of free agent content content up on SteelersNow.com, so be sure to check that out drop me a like subscribe comment on the video all that stuff helps uh grow the channel and i really appreciate it if there's a position group that you guys want me to do next i already have one in mind that i want to do for part three um but if you guys drop me comments on what you guys want to see i will definitely take those into consideration in terms of the order that i will kind of release the the next uh, couple videos with um i am going to be in indianapolis at the combine next week as well covering that in person so i'm sure that i will have um some content for you guys there as well as always peace and love appreciate you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend